Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you game two in a best of three series between Mouse Moro, Mouse Sports' Morals, and Fnatic's Phoenix. Game two taking place here on Shakura's Plateau. Mouse Moro spawning on the bottom left hand side as the Blue Zerg. Meanwhile, Fnatic Phoenix spawning as the Red Terran over here on the top right hand side of the map. So this is going to be Terran versus Zerg once again. Game one on Tall Dream Altar, a very surprising ending as Moro was able to time his attack absolutely absolutely perfectly and get a lot of damage with three um, sets of units, Zerglings, Banelings, and Roaches taking a 1-0 lead. Now, it's up to Phoenix to try to force a Game 3, and being on Shakura's Plateau, it, he will have a very difficult time trying to force a Game 3. Shakura's Plateau, often known as a Zerg map, after um, this really, really easy to establish natural expansion. Also, the same thing could have been said for Tall Dream Altar, as once the early portion of the game, which normally Terran players can put a lot of pressure, has passed, then the, um, then the Zerg has significantly have an advantage. Anyways, Phoenix going to look to build a pretty standard opening, I think, this time, not try to do any fast expansions, as he's going to be building a barracks on the f low ground in order to be able to prevent any units from being able to run by. It does take three full-size buildings here in order to complete this wall-off. Meanwhile, we see Moro making his way out with this one Overlord and a drone at the same time. The Overlord is there to try to spot the high ground, and then the drone is there to either go into this location or this location here. A second Rax has already been placed down, and if Phoenix really wants to keep up this farce, he needs to build a refinery here um, in order that in order that it looks like he is trying to go for additional gas. Otherwise, he's gonna Moro's gonna come up come up into the space and immediately see that there is no refinery and that he needs to look for the second barracks. We already have a, um, a hatchery down over here on the low ground. And as long as this drone perhaps doesn't see this additional barracks over here, he may think that he's going for a fast expansion attempt. An SCV and a Marine already making its way out. The drone now looking around, trying to see if he can spot a command center. He's going to be looking over here, looking over here. As you know, Terran building can lift off, and that is going to be the issue. As that drone desperately looks to see what the strategy of Phoenix is at this stage, um, unbeknownst to him, is it is going to be a lot of Marines as an SCV now making its way over. One drone already coming over to, pre to prevent this one SCV from building any um, any sort of bunker play here. And now drones may be pulled off as well. That SCV needs to run back, perhaps set up the bunker over here. And there's a bunker on the low ground, but the Overlord does spot this. So there is going to be one bunker there, and that is going to offer some sort of protection as drones have a very, very long distance to walk in order to get into that location here. There is one spine crawler already being built, and that range of seven on that spine crawler should be more than enough. And now a second bunker also being built as well as the Marines need to get within position, try to get some damage onto that SCV there, as the Marines are now making their way over, getting some damage onto those drones, dancing back and forth, trying to run into that bunker, but they have to be very, very careful. The Marines need to start getting some damage onto the Spine Crawlers. The Spine Crawlers are already at 32 seconds built, and as soon as that Spine Crawler is done, this, this whole entire very early aggression is not going to work out at all. The Marines need to make their way up, and I believe the Spine Crawlers are going to be completed just in time, and there you go. Uh, the uh, Spine Crawler all it has to do is unroot and because um, the Fnatic's Phoenix's uh, bunker is on the low ground will not be able to shoot up onto that high ground without sight and that is just going to be an issue there so yeah move one spine crawler over just within range and that bunker is instead just going to be salvaged we do have a couple marines already on the ramp to prevent any of these zergings from running by enough damage is going to be dealt zergings now trying to poke away um, two zergings now down into the low hit point range as one poor Marine offers as a sacrifice and gets destroyed. So Moro in a very, very safe position. It has two hatcheries up and running and a very large number of drones currently mining away. Gas is nowhere to be found so far, so we are not going to have that metabolic boost anytime soon. The Marines were able to finish off any of those scouting Zerglings running in by, running by. Workers killed. Both players lost two workers, so not too much lost in the early portion of the game, 300 versus 250. And now th there are those three barracks that I was talking about as the Marines perhaps try to regroup and regather. 
these destructible rocks over here, there actually are backdoor rock entrances. Oh, um, this is actually the TSL version of the map. So there are backdoor entrances. And if Phoenix had actually spawned on the south side over here, he actually would have he would have been able to put a lot of pressure by taking down these rocks with Marauders and Marines. But that is unfortunate for Phoenix that he didn't get into the correct spawning location. My apologies for not keeping track of what version of Shakura's Plateau the TSL version was. Unit-wise, 35 drones compared to 23 SCVs. You can see a very large discrepancy. And now Moro can pretty much almost play it safe for a little bit while longer. Moro knows that with these two spine crawlers, um, that front door is very well protected. On top of that, the early aggression by these Marines and the sheer number of Marines that he was able to see he knows that there is not going to be any drop play or any high tech buildings coming out anytime soon. You can see that an engineering bay is finally coming in and a factory is also coming in as well. But it's going to be quite some time before you see any medevacs. And without those medevacs, uh, those marines are simply not nearly as powerful as they're not able to get inside this base. And by the time the medevacs do arrive, I believe a spire I mean, could be in play, especially as Moro is running off of four gas. And there you go. There's that spire being built on the outskirts of uh, of town, making sure that a scanner sweep doesn't reveal. Perhaps an overlord should have been spawning creep right over here instead. So the spire could be built very, very safely. You can see also, um, I don't know why that one particular overlord decided to spawn creep over there. As we are now getting some creep tumors laid down and in play starting to establish this all-important creep highway. We are now transitioning into what, I, what I'll call the middle game as both players sit inside their bases and try to figure out what exactly is going to be happening. Phoenix, so far, doesn't know what's inside Moro's base. He doesn't see the Spire. He knows that he was taking the Tier 2. And at this stage in the game, uh, Zerg players have two options, two or three options. They can either go Roach Hydra, Early Spire, or try to um, perhaps do some Infestor play. I haven't seen Nidus Networks in quite some time, so there won't be any Nidus Network play. And it looks as though Phoenix more than um, has a good a good sense of what is happening on the inside of his base. Only place for a possible Nidus Network is here. But then again, I have not seen a Nidus Network in quite some time. There is the Spire now coming in, and it looks like seven Mutalists will be trained up in just a moment as the Zerglings taking down a scouting SCV or two, and now a drone gonna grow up to be a hatchery, and now giving an even further economic lead to Moro. But now Moro is still sitting on a large number of minerals for just a moment, and now producing seven Mutalists. The Zerglings now gonna put pressure on these destructible rocks. That Viking knows that it should not land anywhere nearby. As the hatchery has is currently being built down over here. More Mutalists are still being added in addition to the level 1 Zerg flyer attack. Back over here, we do have the Marines. The combat shield is not yet upgraded as the stim pack does take quite a large amount of time now. And as the Zerglings start to peck away at these rocks, Phoenix has to be aware that there are going to be double entrances inside his base and he has to be very, very careful. There are currently two medevacs in the air. They are on the move. And they're going to try to have to avoid all of these Zerglings down over here and perhaps to try to get try to get a drop along this backside with the with the Bandings Nest now coming in and possible fighting on creep. I do not believe the Marines are going to be able to deal that much damage, especially if the Marines try to use that stim pack before they get that combat shield. A lot of damage is going to be dealt. Marines now making their way down 16 Marines going to be able to take down this hatchery in just a moment. The hatchery about 90% done, and now the Marines are going to quickly come in. Drone's going to quickly take get taken down, and now this hatchery, is it going to get canceled in time? No, not canceled. And now Moro losing a very, very early important hatchery, only getting broodlings to show for it, and now being forced to retreat there. It looks like these rocks have been destroyed, and now um, where are the rest of those Zerglings? There are a decent number of Mutalists, and still more Mutalists being added. Level 1 weapons upgrade um, has been completed. So Goss Rifle is dealing 7 damage per attack as the Mutalist and the Zergians are going to start to swarm. Is enough damage going to be dealt? The Marines do not have that combat shield yet. Now going to be turning around trying to fight half of the Marines, not realizing that there's a battle going on and both medevacs destroyed. So these Marines are going to have a very, very difficult time now trying to stay in this game. And now do you destroy your own destructible rocks leading an entrance into your base but saving those Marines? Or do you try to train up more medevacs to do a nice a hot pickup and try to pick up those lower hit point units? And the front door now being reopened. Moro trying to reestablish his 
expansion here at the 9 o'clock location as this game continues. And now Moro also expanding into this low ground expansion here, um, what I'll call the center expansion at the 7 o'clock location as Moro trying to get a strong, strong economic lead over his opponent. There is one Zergling sitting underneath the command center, preventing that from being laid down. And now also a missile turret going to be placed down as well as Phoenix going to be able to defend this location fairly easily. Zergling is now trying to put pressure on these um, destructible rocks as well. And Phoenix doesn't see the destructible rocks are currently getting damaged. Marines once again able to shoot down and get some damage onto those Mutalists there. One Marine trying to fight back and that is not going to be very, very good at all as the Mutalists now putting pressure here and as the Zerglings putting pressure here. Marines need to be coming up that ramp in just a moment. No, all those supply depots are gonna be destroyed. Not quite sure why the, only the missile turret was there as the SCV is now coming in and Marines coming in for support as well. The Mutalists do not want to try to engage and now more missile turrets being built. The engineering bay blocking the moving path of the, his own Marines and Phoenix having a bit of trouble trying to clear out the rest of these Mutalists. So those Mutalists are gonna finish off those medevacs very very easily and now phoenix being forced to mine off of one base but now we see marines coming in over here they, he is going to get swarmed as well by a sea of zerglings the zerglings are upgraded to zero dealing a lot of damage and the engineering bay not completing wow that was very important not completing the armor upgrades in time so these are now one zero marines instead of one one and that damage would have been significant. Uh, what Siege Tanks now going to start to make their way in. And Phoenix does know that there's a hatchery down over here. Going to try to take down these destructible rocks. And perhaps try to um, clear out and deal some damage over here. The Mutilus coming over as well as the Marines making their way and trying to destroy these rocks here. The Siege Tanks getting a decent amount of damage. And now a Queen being forced to back off. Taking a look at the unit count, 84 drones versus 63 SCVs. The Marines now coming over in order to try to offer some support. And the Mutalists going straight in for those siege tanks. Quickly cleaning them up as the Banelings finish off the rest. Sheer army size of Moro, just simply too much as the Zerg macro is staying on top of the game. There is a planetary fortress and only one missile turret. Missile turret going to be easily destroyed as the Marines once again try to offer some help and support for these SCVs. But with no medevacs and no armor upgrades, those Mutalists with two zero upgrades just simply destroying SCVs all over the place. And Phoenix, if he wants to get back into this game, has a long way to go. Meanwhile, Moro now transitioning into Infestors, getting Pathogen Glands, the Azure Carapace upgrades, and also going into Hive Tech. So we may be seeing Broodlords as well. SCVs now trying to repair, but those SCVs getting picked apart with no missile turrets nearby at all to offer any support or help. This Planetary Fortress's days are numbered. SCVs once again trying to come over. The Marines finally showing up to the party, but not going to be able to do very much except save this Planetary Fortress. You can now see Moro running off of essentially four bases. A lot of drones being transferred into this location here beyond saturation. Perhaps some drones will get transferred into this location and this location as well. Taking a look at the workers killed. 33 workers killed by Moro versus Phoenix's 7. Take, uh, uh, finally looking at the losses. 7,700 versus 5,100 so far. And Phoenix needs to try to reestablish another expansion somewhere else. Double engineering base now coming in. Level 2 weapons upgrade and level 1 armor upgrades now being researched. Siege tanks playing in a very defensive fashion. Um, um, fashion and also the missile turrets perhaps should be getting the Terran building plating and the auto sec tracking if you know that your opponent is going zergling mutilus the armor upgrades and the armor upgrades and the plus one um, range upgrade does definitely help a lot against those mutilus a lot of zerg players know the range of missile turrets and know how to simply avoid them by adding one additional range, you can easily take down one or two of those units. And now Baneling simply going to come in and try to melt the Planetary Fortress. Going to do a great job there and now pull away. Phoenix now being forced to mine off of essentially one and a half bases. And also do some long distance mining with these SCVs. Income of Moro sitting at about 3,000 a minute with 98 Harvesters going down to 95 as he builds a lot of Spine Crawlers. As Banelings are now getting scanner sweeped and destroyed. 
Phoenix not walking onto any landmines this game as those banings are spread apart. We are going to see a lot of banings rolling through. There are some creep tumors though, so those creep tumors are going to do a great job of giving additional movement speed to those banings. And now the siege tanks now slowly trying to pressure into this location here. A couple of spine crawlers not going to be enough to handle the siege tanks and the marines. But the Marines and the Siege Tanks are not yet dealing enough damage. Mutilus once again flying in. Gonna come in and deal a lot of damage. The Mutilus absorbing that damage. But the Zerglings now swarming. And Phoenix losing his whole, enti whole entire attack force once again. And there's the GG. So Mouse Moro taking a 2-0 lead. And winning this best of 3 matchup against... Fnatic. So Fnatic won, has a 1-0 record right now while Mouse Mo or Mouse Sports has a 0-1. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between Fnatic's Phoenix and Mouse Sports' Moro here on Shakura's Plateau.